Yeah. Now may I present uh, Dr. Tariq Mutwalli. Tariq Mutwalli was the head of the Red Cell Lab in the National Blood Transfusion Services. Now he is presenting, uh, the, he's coming from Saudi Arabia to, to describe some case studies of a thalassemia patient. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the organizing committee of, uh, for inviting me to give this talk. It's really my pleasure to be with you. Thanks, Dr. Amal Bishlawi. Uh, my talk today will be about um, a story of a miserable thalassemic patient who developed multiple red cell antibodies with extreme difficulty to find compatible blood for uh, this patient. Our core topic, I will give uh, uh, like introduction for the pre-transfusion testing and uh, the aluminization against RBC's antigen and different studies done uh, to detect the rate of uh, uh, aluminization in different countries. Then we'll go to our case study and speak about the history of the patient, the investigations done for this patient, the management and the progress of the case and further management done for this patient. Then coming to the conclusion and some messages. Proper management of the patient in the form of screening for red cell antibodies, phenotyping of RBCs, uh, and the identification of red cell antibodies is very important to detect the allo antibodies in regular transfused patients. It's essential practice in blood transfusion services. We have to transfuse those patients with phenotyped blood, uh, especially to the highly immunogenic antigen, maybe to the RH system and KEL. If we have some resources, we, we may extend to the other extended phenotype for the kid the blood group system, DOFI, MNS, and all are highly immunogenic uh, antigen. Development of allo antibodies complicate uh, and limit transfusion therapy, contributing not only to the technical complication and serological lab testing, but also to the morbidity and mortality uh, of the patient. There are many factors involving, involved in the development of allo immunization, uh, at least two complex contributing elements, which is the difference between the patient and donor RBC's antigen and the recipient immune response. What are the pre-transfusion testing that should be done for the patient? Prior to transfusions, we have to do phenotyping of RBCs. Why prior to transfusion? Because once you start transfusion of the patient, it will be difficult to uh, do uh, phenotyping because uh, you have multiple population of, uh, of the cells inside the blood of the donor, uh, of the patient, sorry. Because if you have a thalassemic patient who is transfused every two to three weeks, so you will, when you have a sample for the, this patient, you will find uh, many cells not related to him, so it will be irrelevant to do phenotyping. Of course, you can depend on genotyping, which is uh, much more expensive, or you can have some complicated uh, lab investigation, lab technique in order to separate the retics and do phenotyping for, for the retics, to, so it will represent uh, the patient, but there is some limitation for this technique. We have to select the blood units to be transfused to the patient. We have to, uh, to follow whether transfusion of the RH Kel blood group antigen or some protocols with the extended phenotype. Whatever you choose from these two protocols, you have to do re-evaluation of the status of the patient before each transfusion. This means that when the patient coming to our uh, lab for, uh, for preparation of blood component, we have to re-evaluate the status in order to detect any new, newly developed antibody in order to give the patient antigen negative blood for this new uh, developed uh, uh, antibody. Uh, of course, we have uh, we have to keep in our records the uh, the database for donor phenotype. Each blood or blood transfusion organization or blood or blood bank should uh, have a regular uh, donor in order to uh, recall those donor to to come to donate blood for specific for a specific patient. This will lower the cost for the for the the patient because the patient will not pay for this phenotype because it's already done uh, and the records uh, are available uh, in uh, the blood bank. So this will make the cost low for the patient. Coming to some different studies done in different countries for the, allo the rate of alloimmunization, uh, in a study uh, done in King Abdulaziz University Hospital in Saudi Arabia, uh, and it was represented in the last conference in Saudi Society of Transfusion Medicine, the rate was 11.5. Another study uh, for Kuwait, it was 30% alloimmunization. And a study done in Egypt in the year 2014, the rate of alloimmunization uh, was 26.2. Uh, 
In Italy, it was 5%. In India, it was 4.9%. And uh, in Greece, it was uh, 3.7%. As we can see, there is a wide range of uh, allo immunization among different countries. This, this uh, may be dependent on several factors and uh, uh, the way of managing those patients in different countries. Coming to our case study for the thalassemic patient who developed the multiple antibodies, and we will see how we manage this patient. In our red cell reference laboratory in the National Blood Transfusion Center, a female patient, 29 years old, blood group O positive. It was diagnosed, fortunately, it was thalassemia intermediate. It was not thalassemia major. Refer to our center for uh, screening and education because she, de she developed the hem severe hemolytic transfusion reaction. She was following in another uh, blood bank or another uh, organization and coming to us with severe delayed hem hemolytic transfusion reaction. We do the screening, we found the screening is positive, and we do antibody identification. We found that the patient developed four antibodies the anti E, anti KEL, anti JKA, and anti S was not excluded. So we have here four multiple antibodies developed in uh, the blood of this patient, two of them with high instant uh, antigen. Investigation done using column agglutination technique. You can use whatever you need, uh, uh, whatever available from the screening and education panels. Different companies are there. Uh, but be strict to the standard operating procedure for each uh, company, uh, the daily one choose, the, the incubation uh, time and the temperature. These are the panels available. You can prepare your own screening and identification panel. It will be uh, uh, very beneficial because you will use your own antigen you, that represent your community or your uh, patient. If you have the facility to prepare your screening and identification panel, it will be uh, much more beneficial or also uh, uh, to avoid the, the delay of transportation or deterioration during transportation and also it will be uh, cost effective. How can we manage uh, our patient? We uh, go to our regular donor, database of regular donor, and we, uh, we issued O positive R1, little R, kill negative, JKA negative, and S negative for this patient. Over one year, this patient uh, received three blood units uh, with, uh, with a gap uh, three to four months between uh, interval between each transfusion. Four months later, the patient was in need of blood. She was a female, she was pregnant, and she was in need of uh, uh, blood. Uh, we prepared uh, uh, blood for blood units for her, uh, for the same phenotype, and we tried the cross-match, but unfortunately, the cross-match was positive. We suspected that the patient developed a new allo antibody. We tried to transfuse the patient with one of these uh, uh, blood unit, but unfortunately the patient developed severe hemolytic transfusion reaction. This means that this antibody uh, is highly immunogenic and uh, uh, can cause hemolytic transfusion reaction for the patient. And we decided to send the, the, the sample of the, ba of the patient to the reference laboratory in Bristol, UK. We have a collaboration with this reference lab, so we'll develop the well equipped reference laboratory. We send the sample uh, because we have limited resources and uh, we, we, waited, we waited for the, uh, their advice in order to transfuse this patient. They confirmed our investigation and our reported antibodies, and they, uh, uh, they discovered uh, that additional antibody was developed for the patient, was anti-Dombrook. Anti-Dombrook is one of the blood group system, number 14, the gene responsible for this antigen present on chromosome number 12, uh, there was a reported cases for anti A and anti B reported to cause the delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction, but there was no reporting of any uh, hemolytic disease of fetus and newborn due to this antibody. So, what was their advice in order to uh, offer blood for uh, this, uh, this patient? We don't have anti sera for the Dombrick, uh, so they uh, advised us to have the same blood group as we, as we prepare the phenotype negative for the four antigen. And from uh, 10 units of this phenotype, we can get one to two units for uh, this patient will be cross-matched negative. We followed their advice. After going back to our database of uh, blood donors, the number of donors available for cross-match was rather small and compatible blood was extremely difficult. 
we found fortunately three compatible uh, units suitable for uh, for the patient and the patient was successfully transfused with no hemolytic transfusion reaction so our case uh, developed multiple antibodies and uh, this is why you, we are saying that uh, good management for the patient from the start uh, can avoid uh, delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction uh, can make it easy to have uh, blood units suitable for the patient but the bad management can make it impossible to find compatible blood for, uh, for those patients. We have about 4,000 regular donor database uh, uh, and we can select from those donors to uh, give blood units suitable for the patient. Uh, for this patient, only three, three donors in all over Egypt can donate blood for this patient. For, uh, this patient. It's something very difficult to find compatible blood for this patient and we keep those three donors to donate blood only for this patient. So the conclusion is develop the, the development of multiple antibodies against RBCs can cause difficulty in finding compatible blood for the patient. Antidombrick was a significant allo antibody that can be found in sera containing multi, multiple antibodies which make it so difficult to be detected. Establish, uh, establishing a database for phenotype regular donor is beneficial for proper transfusion practice and management of regularly transfused uh, patients. Of course, added expenses uh, for the blood units uh, if we do screening, identification, and phenotyping, but the risk of allo immunization is zero, and we have to do multiple cross match in order to find compatible blood for those patients. Hence, the implementation of such a policy would ultimately lead to systematic follow-up and um, better quality of life for those patients. We have alternative options for treatment. We have the gene therapy, simple transplantation. Also, as trial, there is therapeutic strategy to improve ineffective erythropoiesis, uh, as mentioned by Dr. Salva in her presentation. So the message to the hematologist, please refer your patient to us once diagnosed in order to do phenotyping prior to transfusion. For the decision maker and higher authority, please allocate some budget for screening and identification and doing phenotyping for those patients. To the manager uh, of blood transfusion services and blood bank, please establish a database for regular phenotype blood donors and prepare your local cell panel if it is possible for you. So each blood bank should have a phenotype blood donor ready to donate blood for a specific patient. This, was, w this will make the cost much more lower and we have a good model for this in the National Blood Transfusion Center. 4,000 are available, 4,000 blood donors are available to donate blood for regular transfused patients, not only thalassemic but all chronic patients. Also another good model uh, that present in King Abdul Aziz University Hospital in Saudi Arabia, about 1,000 regular donors are available to donate blood for thalassemia and sickle cell anemia patients. Also a message to the community, please screen for thalassemia trait to minimize new births of thalassemia patients. I think there was a, a proposal for a project um, by the Salsimia International Federation to implement screening in Egypt for uh, before marriage uh, in order to screen for Salsimia trait. Uh, I don't know why didn't uh, this uh, proposal uh, see the light. I, I, and uh, I asked Dr. Amel Bishlawi to give us feedback about this proposal that was uh, <laughs> that was initiated by the Salasimia International Federation. Okay. Okay. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Dr. Tarek.